Hello, welcome back. It is week 131 on Out on That Line. I'm Jeff with my co-host Alex as always. Alex, how you feeling this week? Jeff, I got headbutted in the nuts by a dog earlier on my way home. That's how I'm doing. You guys might hear a dog barking in the background. You might hear a couple dogs <laughs> yeah. barking in the background for this episode, but I don't want anyone to be alarmed because we're going to have the same old out on that line fun that you've come <laughs> to love and appreciate on the show. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. So, you know, you have like, you have your Dolby surround, you know, you have your Atmos then you also you have pooches in stereo that's what we're working with tonight i don't know if my dogs can hear yours through my headphones to respond barking or they're just responding to my neighbor's dog that's just outside all the time um who knows but you're gonna hear some co-hosts tonight i think folks um it just is what it is it must be a full moon but that's when we do our best work now this week we've got an album and it's a little bit a little bit on the shorter side uh, right up our alley so i think we're gonna have a good discussion for however long it lasts at the end of the episode but i found this list i saw this list get either tweeted out or i saw it on reddit i don't know i usually did just constant flip between the two of those the av club um general like kind of like music blog like news site i guess similar to like pitchfork that sort of thing um i think they focus a lot more on like other types of articles than like pitchfork does but you get the idea so they released this list, the 25 greatest cover songs of all time. And I mean, it's one of those things you're like, okay, well, how necessary was this? But I remember not too long ago, we talked about some of our favorite cover songs of all time, kind of what we look for in cover songs. So I was inter interested enough when I saw the headline to take a look at the list. So I'm just going to start off um, and read some off to you and let you know what order they're in. Um, and as we get deeper into the list, you're going to start to see I think what uh, a lot of people online have been upset about in the comments um, on this article, pretty much everywhere that it's been posted. So starting with number 25, um, Husker Du, Eight Miles High, it's cover um, of a Birds song. So I'm not familiar with the Husker Du cover, but at 25, who cares? Um, Thin Lizzy, Rosalie at number 24, uh, cover of Bob Seger song. Rosalie is fantastic. I'm sure Thin Lizzy did a good job with that at 24. Again, it doesn't matter. At 23, yes, at 23, Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You at 23. So immediately when I started reading this list, 23 for <laughs> I'll Always Love You is crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. Like what, what kind of thought do you have when you see a song like I will always love you in the greatest covers ever list at number 23. You're putting a timeless classic down at the bottom of the barrel with Thin Lizzy and Husker Du. No disrespect, <laughs> hey, no disrespect to either of those acts off on their own, but this is the game of covers. I've never heard either cover of that were just named there. Yeah. You know what I've heard a million times? I will always love you. I've heard the original and I've heard the cover enough to know that you can't be bearing something like that at 23 in a list of the greatest covers of all time. Who do I have to stab? <laughs> well, uh, we may go look for the author after this, but uh, hang on to your butts because it gets better after this. So moving on to number 22 is going to be Ike and Tina Turner, Proud Mary. Another fantastic cover <laughs> and another classic song Dude, what the fuck at number 21 jeff buckley hallelujah unbelievable at number 21 johnny cash at number 20 with hurt i mean we just those three what would you i will always love you you know the last three four we just went over um all-time classic covers like those you could have argument for being in the top five in whatever order you might want to put them in uh but absolutely have an argument for them being certainly inside of the top 20 but we'll move on we'll keep we'll keep going the clash i fought the lot number 19 ahead of all those songs we just mentioned urge overkill girl you'll be a woman soon cover of a neil diamond song you ever heard this one alex what the fuck i've i've heard it in the context of pulp fiction and i couldn't tell you whose version it is that's how memorable it is yeah it's well, urge urge overkill apparently is the one and i've seen pulp fiction a bunch do not remember what the song is. Maybe if I heard it, I guess. I think it's when they were like smoking crack at oh. 
I almost called him Winton Marsalis, Marsalis Wallace's house. Um, I bet he, I bet Tarantino did that on purpose to make you make that mistake. He had to, motherfucker. Yeah. He's a genius. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's weird. It's It's got a weird energy to it and a weird message. Yeah. Girl, you'll be a woman soon. I'm like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Tarantino asked them to write that for him to use, and he just happened to, he's like, oh, I guess it'll work for the movie. Yeah, I don't want to be he too just... blatant and ask him to write a song about feet. <laughs> so we'll move to number 17 blondie hanging on the telephone yeah it's a good cover but yeah, whatever uh pet shop boys always on my mind the cover of the first elvis song then willie nelson is more famous for it than the pet shop boys did it i had never heard this one i will say maybe deserves to be higher than 16 pretty fantastic cover and a hysterical opening to the music video so absolutely recommend Go check out this list because they have the YouTube video embedded in their slideshow. Um, very, very funny stuff. So I would definitely go check that out. Pet Shop Boys, they're classic. So this was a good cover. Wait, remind me what this is the cover of? You uh, were always on my mind? Always on my mind, yes. Um, okay. The Beatles, Twist and Shout. I guess I guess you have to put it in there. Sure. Number 14, Stevie Wonder, We Can Work It Out. I don't know if I've heard the Stevie Wonder version, but I'm familiar with the song. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's good at number 14. REM Superman is a cover by the or uh, originally by the click. Never heard it either one before the cover or the original Van Halen. You really got me by the kinks. Now, this is a cover, my friend. It is. It is a cover. It's a cover. I just hate the song. I, I, I hate. I'm not a big the Kinks guy either. Really? I'm sorry to say, I, I love the Halen. Okay. I'm not super into the Kinks, and I just I just can't stand that song. So I get I get nothing out of that. I I certainly wouldn't put that higher on my list. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. That's that's you know I can see why it's high on the list. I'm surprised to find that out about you and the Kinks. I figured their rebel attitude would be right up your alley. No, oh, no, I like uh, you know petulant assholes like frank zappa well let That's me tell thing. you a little something about the davies brothers oh. they're both petulant assholes so you may find something you like with the kinks maybe time to give it another shot girl you really got me going <laughs> <laughs> number 11 is going to be talking heads take me to the river and ooh, what a classic yeah that's a great pick Again, I don't know if 11's too low for that one. I'd I bump it, it a might, little higher. I think it might be because Devo's cover of I Can't Get No Satisfaction, Speak of the Rolling Stone Devils. This is not what I would have expected at number 10. Like, think of how many songs we've just listed that you're like, damn, yeah, that's a great cover. That song was played all throughout my childhood. That's like an all-time fantastic. You hear that in the grocery store at your middle school dances like you hear those songs everywhere and then you know what you hear at number 10 of the greatest cover songs ever devo's cover of i can't get no satisfaction yeah if you had that on your fucking bingo cards <laughs> you better go play the ponies my friend <laughs> again i'm not into the rolling stones i'm not into that song devo it is what it is right so again, that's one of those like peanut butter and chocolate weird mm -hmm. combinations that's just weird enough to work, but I haven't heard that cover. I haven't heard Devo cover Satisfaction. It may become your favorite Rolling Stones song. You never know. <sighs> Thank God. <laughs> it's not a high bar to clear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I feel like I like the idea and the vibe of Dio or Devo more than I like Devo's music. You yeah. know what I mean? Like happy to support, but you know, from a distance yeah i mean it's it's outfit it's silly outfits and silly hats and does a robot drink champagne <laughs> you know well does it yes a robot drink champagne i wonder because i'll bet you bender drinks champagne in futurama at some point and i'll it's bet you they did that time. i'll bet you they did that specifically because of that song oh i i, I ripped that off from snl doing Wait, a parody of devo isn't Matt Groening, didn't he do the, like, wasn't he involved with Mark Mothersbaugh at some point? The guy that was in Devo? Uh, 
no, I think Danny Elfman from Oingo Boingo does the music for The Simpsons. Okay. I don't, I don't know if he has a Devo connection, too. That might be asking for a lot, Jeff. Yeah, that, that might, might be, be asking, asking for, for a lot. lot. And yeah, we got a lot out of pick number 10 there. Number nine is Janis Joplin, Me and Bobby McGee, the cover originally by Chris Christopherson. Mm -hmm. At number nine, I don't know. I think it probably should be on the list. Number nine, I don't know. Strong. Uh, too Amy high Winehouse for you, you Mark, Too high, yeah. I think too high, especially wow. with all the, I mean, uh, the, the ones I'm about to go through here. Alex, let me tell you, there's a few that you're going to realize don't belong up here. Right, um, right. So this one I think does, because I love this song, Valerie by Amy Winehouse and Mark Ronson. Mm, mm, mm. I did not realize that it is a cover. I thought that was originally by them, but the more you know, I guess. So number seven, Run DMC, Walk This Way, the one they did with Aerosmith. Now that song bangs. I don't know if it belongs at number seven. Um I really, if I listen to either version of Walk This Way, it's going to be the Run DMC one. Just got more energy. I love that song. Um, I love Aerosmith, so that's probably a big reason why. But if you don't really like Aerosmith, probably not going to really like that song regardless. Harry Nilsson, Without You. You heard of this one at number six, Alex? Uh, no, I couldn't place it. <laughs> at number six, you could What do you mean? At number this one was ranked number six, Alex. What do you mean you couldn't place it? Yeah, I mean, clearly, I'm missing something. Some boomer that watches our show <laughs> is out there being like, No, you fucking moron. <laughs> yeah, probably the same people that uh, didn't watch our Rolling Stones episode. <laughs> yeah, out of fear. <laughs> number five, Aretha Franklin. Respect again, had no idea that was a cover, but fantastic song. So, I guess that number five is fine. And this is the one. Alex, I'm going to let you guess who is the auteur of the song that ranks at number four, or I guess the performer of the song that ranks at number four. So it's a singular performer. Can you give me a decade? This one, uh, I don't know when this came out and he's been around a long time. I feel like it's going to be a very long shot for you to guess. I'll narrow it down and tell you that it's somebody that you know that I hate. Oh, um, okay. So you too. Nope. No. Eric Clapton. Correct part of the world. Okay. So Ireland. Across the pond. Across the England. canal. Yes. I thought Bono was Irish. Um, okay. England. You hate him. England, you hate him. Ah, oh, man, I'm coming up empty. Glasses. Do you hate Elvis Costello? Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Oh, you fuck. Yes. And it's his cover of What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. Nope, that's, that belongs right where it is. <laughs> At number four? Absolutely. Oh, my God. The fact that that song ranks so far ahead of I Will Always Love You is absolutely fucking insane. Well, okay, that I'll Elvis give you that. Elvis Costello is even on this list with that nah, song. Nah, nah, and I've never heard his cover of it. That song is fine. Elvis You've Costello sucks. Dude, first of all, how fucking dare you? Second of all, you got to check out that cover. It'll change your mind. You'll love Elvis Costello. You'll come back here next week and be like, I've always loved Elvis Costello. You were late to the game. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to gaslight the hell out of you if I end up liking it. If it means you like it, that's <laughs> fine with me. Good. Well, let's move into the top three. The Kingsman, Louie Louie unbelievable drop of the ball uh, for the number three pick like who even knew that's a cover and who gives a fuck about that song yeah anymore? fuck that song yeah um at number two Sinead o'connor nothing compares to you now yes that song is a banger number one Jimi hendrix all along the watchtower belongs on the list yes number one i don't know if i've ever been more sure of anything and it does not belong at number one i don't think so no uh, yeah okay well here's the thing i guess how are we thinking about what makes a cover song worthy of the top spot is it like the like putting a twist is it like a faithful 
execution of the concept. Like here was a great song that we turned into a different kind of great. Here's a song that was just a song and we turned it into something like, what are we evaluating it on? Is a successful cover something that transformed the ingredients? Is it something that kind of stayed close to what was originally there? And does the cover itself need to be a big giant celebrated deal? Cause I got to tell you the Husker do one <laughs> popcorn fart for me. I couldn't fucking tell you. So what's the, what in your mind, if you're remaking this list is the criteria. So in my mind, if you're talking about the top 25 or top, however many cover songs ever, I think at a minimum, the cover song has to be generally considered better than the original. I think if you're going to be in the top, I don't think you have to have, to have a successful cover does not need to be better than the original to be in the top 25 though. It does. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think that's kind of bullet point one that it has to meet. So once you're there, so I will always love you. Classic example, Johnny cash hurt classic example, the clash. I fought the law classic example. Cause I don't even know what the original song is for. I fought the law. So, you know what I mean? All those things are now Sinead O'Connor. Nothing compares to you. I know the Prince one better just because I'm a big Prince fan, but overall, Sinead O'Connor's is the more famous of the two. 100%. Um, you know, I think all of those are very good examples of what makes a cover song belong on a list like this. Now, to do songs like that Husker Du, that's on there just because somebody wanted to brag that they know who the fuck Husker Du is. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know like three songs, and I forced myself to listen to them because I was like, well, they sound, everybody that's cool says they like Husker Du, so let me go ahead and listen to them. And I think that was a big, big criticism of this list is because a lot, of, it seems like it was a by committee thing with the AV club, like the contributors there. And everybody kind of just like threw out their ideas. So there were some people that threw out, I will always love you and hurt in these, like what you generally consider to be classic cover songs. And then there were people throwing out Husker Du and Harry Nilsson, you know, in, in these songs that are just like, okay, you know that song and it might be a great cover, but in terms of this list, like it's not consistent with the criteria that they used to pick these songs. So I think that makes it difficult to find any sort of like value in how they've ranked anything here. Well, and I guess if you're looking at it like a, an all time cover song needs to both be a great cover, however you handled it faithfully or took it in a different direction, it needs to be a great cover. And in a vacuum, it needs to be a great song. And I think like on its own, it needs to be a great song not just a great cover a great song and for me that's i will always love you mm -hmm. because you can go back to fucking dolly you can go back you can go to whitney it doesn't really matter which direction you head it's going to be a great song but the whitney one took over the world it took I mean, over the world it's it's a meme yeah it's it, the fact is like you do not know that song probably anymore unless whitney houston did that song you know what I mean? Like uh, that Dolly Parton version, unless you're like a huge country fan, like a huge Dolly fan, like that song probably generally fades into obscurity and not that it's a bad song. It's a wonderful song. Even when, when Dolly Parton sings it, she's a great singer and it's a, it, she was such a good songwriter, but Whitney, very few people had the voice and the presence and like the, the charisma that Whitney Houston had, you know, she had just, it was something else. It was like Stevie Ray Vaughan with a guitar. It was, you know, Yo-Yo Ma with a cello. It's it was it's insane. Like the talent that just seemed to go through her, and I will recommend people watch The Bodyguard. Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a big time Kevin Costner, big time Kevin Costner man. Um, so Marla was it was easy for her to talk me into watching that movie, and I'd never I guess I'd never seen it, or maybe I saw it when I was like really little because I think my sister used to watch it all the time. Um. And I just wasn't sure what to really expect. And it was classic Kevin Costner performance, just like being a man's man, you know, and then it was a stunning performance by Whitney Houston. I mean, talk about talent, like in, in the kind of talent that when she was lost, it was, that was one of those moments that was truly like heartbreaking when you knew that she had passed away. Cause it was different. There's a lot of people that can sing really well. There's a lot of people that can, maybe even hit some of the notes she does, but just something about 
the whole package. And I feel like she very much represented I will always love you. And that's what made that song even greater is because people were rooting for her. And that just, it was just such a snowball effect with it. I think I'm going to challenge you to this right now. We should do, and I'll figure out the technology of it all, but we should do an episode where we sit and we ram the Whitney Houston greatest hits. Just, we put the music video up Mm -hmm. and we just do a whole episode where we jam through like what we perceive to be our top three. We do a live jam with Whitney Houston. I've been it, Tanner got me back into live from Daryl's house. God damn him. Ooh. So live from out on that line. I don't know. Yeah. Live from Daryl's house is sick though. Yeah. It's but sick. now it's all I'm going to, I listen to the Blackberry smoke one at work yeah. and I'm like, damn. All right. Yeah. I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch that one after this. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. I put it up on my second monitor, yeah. which is on an arm. So it's just Daryl Hall, just smiling down on me for half an hour. Yeah. Now those are some cover songs I get down with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cause he gives, you know, and he's, he loves himself quite a lot. Oh like yeah. Darryl, he's very, very sure of himself. You know, there's, there's no lacking. He doesn't need you to love him cause he's got plenty of love for himself, but he does let all, Every other artist that comes on there, he lets them shine just as much as he does. He puts just as much effort into doing their songs as as he wants them to put into his. And that is so, so cool to see on that show. And it that the Palladium channel that I used to have oh, yeah. at my dad's house is one of the greatest television channels that's ever existed. Just nonstop like festival sets, um, full like festival days. Like they do an entire day of Glastonbury, just like from 10 a.m. on through the headliner and just play it, let it rip all the way through. They would do the live from Daryl's house all the time. They do like old concerts. They do Bruce Springsteen concerts all the time on there. It was fantastic. And when they would do the live from Daryl's house, there were some of them that were so goddamn good. There was, was a Mayor Hawthorne guy I'd never heard of before. His oh, yeah. episode knockout absolute knockout yeah absolutely folks go watch live from daryl's house it's on youtube now right yeah oh yeah it's rocking over on youtube yeah don't worry what else is on youtube that's so funny you say that jeff because i yeah. just had that same <laughs> thought i had an image of myself riding on a segway and filming that and putting that on youtube.com forward slash c forward slash out on that line that's right folks this is perhaps the most cerebral transitional bit that we've ever done this is perhaps our most conceptual segue and how appropriate because this back half of this episode we're going to be talking about a real scientific hip-hop artist and we like to think of ourselves as science dissecting the finer points of music and entertainment because they don't build statues to critics (laughs) yet we aim to change that at youtube.com forward slash c forward slash out on that line that's right folks you got to subscribe you got to like the videos you got to keep your notifications on you got to leave a comment we got to hear from you we got to hear from you it's a welfare check so (laughs) make sure that you just you know make your presence known at youtube.com forward slash c forward slash out on that line that was yeah that was that was a really really good one that felt that felt right that felt good and i think it leads us right into the album so let's talk about it it's going to be mariah the scientist and the album is called to be eaten alive released just recently on october 27th yes in the year of our lord 2023 now this one is i'd never heard of mariah the scientist you sent me three albums and i just kind of visually i I clicked on a couple songs in each one scrolled to a random spot i was like something needs to be sonically interesting enough for me to just either keep it in contention or eliminate it Mm. and this is the one that won also works out that it was the shortest one um so the easiest to prepare for but also why we chose something as robust as a 25 greatest cover songs list try to fill some time today um so did you have any like past familiarity with mariah the scientist or was this your first rodeo as well um it was my first full-on rodeo because i'd heard a couple songs sometimes you just kind of slip into the algorithm and there was one of her songs and i can't remember the name of it right now but i remember it started weird and it had interesting cover art and her name and i was like all right there's a lot going on here it's like um the same thing with like princess nokia black panther s 
um, just all these different artists where I'm like, all right, well, I, I'm intrigued. You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Um, and that was Mariah, the scientist. There were a couple songs that I've heard that I really, really liked. And yeah, when I saw this album came out, I was like, all right, well, let's, uh, let's get in there. And I, I offered you three selections and I'll say them on here in case people feel a strong kind of way. Ooh, Javelin by Sufjan Stevens. And then an incredibly long title by um, Chapel Roan, Chappelle Roan, Roan. It's very colorful and feminist. And I really, I listened to the first two songs and I was like, I really enjoy this a lot. Okay. Well, we could look at doing that one. Cause I don't know what other albums are coming out here. So we can, we can certainly discuss. I, I love it. Yeah. But um, yeah. So out of those, I was like, I'd be happy doing any of those three kind of knew you wouldn't go for the Sufjan. We call that the sock on the floor, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. And I think, after listening to this again it's short it's sweet it's very difficult to say a lot about because the the songs are kind of as good as they are and as great as her voice is and it all kind of like fits like a glove it is a little homogeneous homogeneous however mm -hmm. you say it i don't quite know I feel like an asshole right now <laughs> it's it's not a cosmic gumbo like Caliucci's. It's very much like a strong concept. Not a concept album, but it's just like, here's the sound. Here's the structure. Here's the music. You got mm -hmm. 27 minutes of this. If you don't like it, you're fucked. If you do, hang on for the ride. And I hung on for the ride. I rather enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really did like this a lot. And I think I would not have liked this if this was a 40-minute album. No. of this you know i think the the shorter album time i think is a fantastic choice because i don't you know this one i it's not going to go on my like end of year best list but it is going to go on my end of year like i enjoyed that one you know it's it was it was a a good experience hearing it because the production on it is very good um i think the the melodic kind of chances she takes on things is really are really good um, the features that she has on there are really good. What I, and if you really kind of listen to the lyrics, what I really enjoyed about it is it felt very real the whole time. You know, this didn't feel like this person was like, Oh, I just need to go in there and write an album. This person, if this was kind of one of the albums that felt like there was something that needed to be said. So this album is the result, you know, it wasn't, made for the sake of i need to go do this music i need to make this it clearly you know very emotionally like raw lyrics in this meaning that you know it felt like there were things bubbling up and had to be written down and kind of put out and and taken care of before they did any kind of further damage so i feel like that was a really kind of a unique way to take this one in is to really look at it as like this person this is like a confessional if you look at this as just she was just kind of writing poetry it makes a lot of sense you know the fact that she's a fantastic singer and these are really really excellent like i guess i'd call it like soundcloud r&b songs i don't know if you call it hip-hop i think you'd, it'd be fair but it's like this very much has that kind of same sort of vibe as like SZA, and this could have been a weekend album like the weekend could have been the singer on this album and it would have sounded very very similar to this and it would have worked um it's definitely of a certain genre but within that it, it still was a really really good experience yeah it's like pop r and b not poppy but it's definitely got a very strong identifiable r and b that you're right does have kind of that um sound clown sound clown sound cloud aesthetic to it um and definitely like some of the like distortion effects and things you hear there and these like weird little bits and bobs have that very lo-fi soundcloud sound clown <laughs> kind of thing going on um but sh the thing that kind of elevates it is she has a really great presence on mm. all of these songs like you said she can really sing um it, it there is some kind of like reminiscence of scissor jasmine sullivan something like that um but I would dare say as much as I love, I love SZA and I think SZA has got a great like charisma and voice, I would say at least in voice, 
I think Mariah the Scientist has a mm -hmm. little bit, little bit of a leg yeah. up, which made these songs more impressive to me. Mm -hmm. She was able to like, like you said, go places, try different things with this like very languidly paced, very thoughtful R and B. It was like borderline Quiet Storm, which is a sneaky underrated genre. Sade, the pioneer doesn't get nearly she's become kind of a meme and i don't fucking appreciate that <laughs> about sade or quiet storm so miss me with your fucking bullshit everybody <laughs> yeah she just i really i think she's gonna have she strikes me as someone's gonna have a very solid career like she's never gonna struggle to sell tickets to her shows Yeah, you know, i don't know if she's gonna sell out gillette stadium but I think if she continues to do things of this quality um, and continues to just be honest in her in the music like she is with this album, I think she's got a, a really fantastic career ahead of her. I think it's something that there is a lane for this. Now, I don't know how long this like, again, this kind of like SoundCloud sort of R&B and rap sound is going to last as the fad. And every time there's a fad, the people that are the People, the performers within that fad are saying no you just say that because yours fell off and they always do it's going to happen it's it's what is she going to do next when it does happen i think she's got the voice it's she seems like she has the presence and the charisma to pivot and become you know go into another genre whatever is up and coming that she can take advantage and do that um i just it feels like this is a very temporary sort of genre to me or at least this little subset of it. It's like, it's, it's unless somebody comes out with something groundbreaking and totally world shattering and, and still in this genre, but just sounds completely different. I don't know what you do to do that. That's why I'm doing a podcast and not the one trying to create that kind of music. But I think it's something that it feels like we're on the tail end of it. And maybe that's why we aren't more excited about this because this is just as good of quality as far as, the effort put in the mixing the the production all of that kind of stuff is a lot of the albums that we've loved i think the problem is it just doesn't take that extra little step into being like a super ingrained memorable album like we always reference on the show like there's a good probably dozen albums that we talk about all the time because they've risen to that standard well this one is very good it's going to get a stream it from me not a buy it if you really love this genre, it's probably a buy it because it's you just want to have this in your collection. But I think there's other better options within this. So just getting to stream it from me today, but a hearty one. It was a good album. A hearty stream it. I like that. Um, I will co-sign a hearty stream it. Uh, here's the thing. I've talked about it before and I don't even know what you call it. But there's that kind of very classic. I don't even know if you would like call it a trap beat or what. You know, I'm like painfully mm. unhip. But that like kind of that like plasticky ass beat. I hate that. It's so ubiquitous. <laughs> it's in everything. It takes a really special song for me to like not have an MK Ultra reaction to that. Mm -hmm. And it's all over this album. But that's a compliment to her and her artistry that it, it didn't bug me. It felt appropriate for this. But maybe this is unfair to use this as a benchmark for like where do i think you are in the pecking order but something like sos by SZA floored mm -hmm. me kaliuchi's floored me mitski floored me mitski's maybe not an appropriate inclusion but mm -hmm. i'll get her in whenever i can <laughs> but the kaliuchi's SZA, like that kind of stuff went places and it floored me and this impressed me and entertained me so for that reason i have to keep it at its appropriate tier mariah the scientist you got something to strive for now and that's a hearty buy it but today i can only give you an enthusiastic stream it excellent well i think it's a pretty good effort because there's a there's been a, a lot worse albums the one we talked about last week so if you are a if you're a rolling stones fan uh or somebody that you know, hasn't necessarily loved the Rolling Stones. You can check out last week's episode where we talk a little bit about their new album, or I should say their new effort. Um, <laughs> and if you want to see any of our other videos, any of our other reaction videos, any of our other podcasts, our album reviews, our one-off shows, the On the Record episodes, there may be one of those coming down the pipe. You never know when we get interested in something. 
but you're going to find that at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash out on that line where you should like, and subscribe, where you should tell us in the comments, what you want to hear. And if there's anything that you want us to talk about on the show, you let us know in there. Alex, do you have any closing thoughts for the people this week? Just remember if a dog headbutts you in the nuts, it's not personal. It's the owner's fault. Stay safe out there. <laughs> Until next time.